Jackson, who's uh, next up, chief the, scientist from Bitly, so big data in, right? company. And uh, so those of you who everybody knows Bitly, right? The URL short it takes big giant oh. URLs and makes them tiny. Hi, Hillary. How are you? Hi, Dave Vellante I'm well. From Wikibon. Hillary Hi. Mason. Great Pleasure to meet you. John Furrier with Silicon Angle. Nice to meet you. Hi. We love Bitly. We know about your product. I use it all the time. I'm glad to hear yeah, it. It's one, one of our Sometimes contributors. Sometimes I feel like I can't live without it. Yeah. One of our contributors <laughs> used to work there way back in the day, Rex Dixon. Oh, yeah. Shout out to your Rex. Rex is amazing. Is he he still handles there? all of our support email. When he you email still? support at Bitly, Rex will reply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, he, and we've been following you guys for a long time. I've been following the URL uh, shorting business for, for quite some time, and you guys just have phenomenal growth. Um, yes, it's uh, so Bitly. Bitly, for the folks out there don't know, um, has a service that they shorten the URLs down f from these big long URLs to short ones, so you can put them into Twitter and Facebook, and, mm -hmm. and essentially creates the redirection to the actual web page, and which is essentially an abstraction layer between a, the DNS URL and the 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 click. So with that, you get massive amounts of cool data. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? I mean, so you know the kinds of contents flowing around the web. Mm -hmm. um, your adoption rate has been pretty high. So talk about the challenges that you're seeing with, with Bitly right now and in, in with data. How big is it? What's, what, are, what are some of the stats? Sure. Um, so we use 301 redirects, which are part of the HTTP standard. And that means that when you click on a Bitly link, it goes through this permanent redirect and takes you to the, the long URL. Um, so we see those events where people share URLs through Bitly. Um, and a lot of those come through our API, about 80%, uh, which means that when you're using a Twitter client like TweetDeck, uh, you're still using Bitly behind the scenes. Um, and then we see all of those clicks on Bitly links. So we're able to see how people share content, how people consume content, and then how they reshare that content. And we look at the content itself as well. So we actually pull all that content um, and do some analysis of our own. So some stats, we're doing uh, hundreds of millions of clicks a day on um, probably, again, hundreds of millions of new URLs a day. I haven't checked today. Um, and we're able to see the kinds of content people look at. Uh, right now, obviously, um, the content around the conflicts in Egypt is huge. Uh, and if you saw the graph we released last night, uh, you could see that we saw um, traffic in Egypt go almost to zero over the last few days, only to spring up um, on this amazing curve uh, just yesterday. Uh, and it, it seems completely amazing to me that we can see those kinds of world events and phenomena reflected in how people are clicking on links. And, and weren't you saying in your keynote that interest from the outside world went through the roof when the internet shut down? And, and Absolutely. Right. It was it's that one event to see that caused chart. people yeah. from around the world just to be clicking on all of these news stories about Egypt. So your, gro your growth at Bitly it really has been driven by the whole mega trend of Twitter, Facebook, because uh, of the social side of it. Um, and also with cloud computing, you guys can deploy your service pretty quickly when you guys were startup. And then yes. obviously mobility. Mm -hmm. Screen real estate is a premium, so having uh -huh. shortened URLs are key. So we were just talking yesterday and today we coined the, the, the phrase, um, data is the heartbeat of cloud, social, and mobile. And you guys are a real living example of that. So what what is the uh, the direction for Bitly? Because the market's really in your favor. The mm -hmm. business of Bitly, you guys do all this service. How do, you, how do you guys operate your business? Do you do distribution deals with people? How does Bitly's business work? So the business side of Bitly, um, first a small disclaimer, mm -hmm. that's not my area of specialty. Um, I focus mainly on the data and the math. Yeah. But the business side of Bitly, our current uh, product is Bitly Pro, which is a white labeled solution for people who want to understand how their brands distribute socially uh, on the internet. And that gives people uh, their own short URL that's powered through Bitly, and they get to see analytics about how their content that they share spreads, but also how other people on the internet are sharing their content um, without them in the middle at all. Um, and so people can learn some really interesting stuff from that. But we're also building some new products on our, our data set, and I really do believe that um, it, it is our opportunity to take the data we see from other people and then return it to them in a way uh, that'll really help them explore, discover, and learn things faster. Um, so one product that we're releasing soon is called News.me, which is a, an iPad app for uh, reading the news. And we're hoping to build more of those types of things in the near future. Because you get all the data. I mean, you, you can see trending information at any level, not just what's popular. You can yes. see down to the micro level within sections, right? Like, uh -huh. a, like a newspaper. 
I mean, Rupert Murdoch launched Daily Me, you know, newspaper. So are you guys going to do that kind of thing with, a, with a, like a newspaper app? Is that what you're saying? Um, it's not exactly a newspaper app, and you'll have to wait and see, <laughs> to see exactly what it'll be. Okay, we'll be. go back to the, the, the data. So the, on the data side, you guys have massive amounts of data. Mm -hmm. What things, um, first of all, we're big fans of, of what you guys are doing, so obviously the data. The I'm good, glad the good, to hear it. The good thing is that it's a great user experience. You guys can explore all these, oh, this, these gestural data and or real data clicks. So mm -hmm. the user experience. So talk about the user experience that you guys see uh, enabling, and then we're going to talk about the, down, the bad side, which is, you know, spam. Okay. Twitter is littered with a lot of spam, as you know. <laughs> How do you detect the bad guys, phishing, spam? Because there's a lot of that going on, and, and the communities are trying to self-police that. So talk about the user experience that you guys mm -hmm. are enabling and with the data, and then talk about the, the dark side of the data. So we see, um, I love the Bitly user experience. I think our product design and front end team is amazing. Um, and we, we've created a site where you can really easily share the content you want to share. Um, and you can push it out through other networks as well. And we recently released Bitly bundles uh, where you can take several pieces of content, uh, have them at one short link and share them together, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and we're, we're focusing on providing that kind of yeah. easy, frictionless user experience in order to help people share the data they want to share and get the data back. And one thing I should mention is that you can take any Bitly link, whether it's yours or someone else's, add a plus sign to the end of it, and you can see all of the global statistics for that link. Um, that's completely public. You can see how many people clicked on it, where in the world they came from, that's which nice. websites they were referred so from. Just so uh, after the Bitly link, put space plus or no a plus space. appended to the... Just a plus okay. right after that. So no so space. Bitly slash. Add a plus to the URL and you'll see all the global. Oh, status. slash, yep. slash so plus. So no, no, bitly no. slash some letters and numbers. Yep. That's the bitly yep. hash. Right. And then a plus sign at the Just end. Got Hit it. enter. That's simple, right? Very Just simple. Add a plus sign. Boom. Um, so so you, you guys have a rich data set, and, and the data world's all about the, how big the data has to get some corpus to work off mm -hmm. of a data set. And so some people will have small data sets, might not see the big picture, but as you guys amass this massive amounts of user data, and I'll say transactional data and distribution <laughs> data, you seeing you probably see the span, you probably see some of the, the patterns emerging in, 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 in the, the dark side. So can you comment about you know, what's going on there. I mean, that's a big Absolutely. problem on Twitter. We all know spams out there. Everyone gets these phishing hacks. Mm -hmm. So you guys have a good spot to go after that and look at that. Can you share? Yes, and um, that's a project that we work on. We spend a lot of resources on um, highlighting, finding the spam and malware in the Bitly data and uh, preventing people from clicking through. So you might have had the experience where you click through a Bitly link. Yeah, and win you an get iPad. I think that was going around for a long time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So, you you, know. so you'll get this page with a big stop sign on it and um, I think a little angry puffer fish. And it says, you, you should be really careful about clicking through this. Um, but we do show you where that URL goes so that you can make your own. We trust humans more, yeah, more yeah. than any sort of automated system. So you can make your own judgment as to whether you want to click through that. But the way that system works is that uh, whenever a link comes into our system, we actually, we pull the content of that link, we analyze the traffic patterns around that link, um, and we make sure that it doesn't resemble anything we know to be malicious content. Um, now, of course, there are things that are really on the line, uh, especially shared socially. Somebody might just be a little bit too excited about a marketing campaign. Um, and so yeah. we do have a human in the mix to make Twitter, sure that we don't. And Twitter has, uh, been, has done that, where they've actually, too many follows from actually a human, they shut down your account. And we do work yeah. closely with uh, social networks that rely on Bitly to make sure that nothing damaging. So gets this is through. a top priority for you guys. You guys are Absolutely. all over it, and and you guys have to harness the data to kind of pull that out. Yeah. So so our spam detection system has two main parts. The first part is that we partner with a lot of security companies. We use Google Safe Browse lists. So anything they know to be spam or phishing will be blocked automatically. Um, the second part is a homegrown technology. So we found that. Uh, at Bitly, we see the data a little bit before anybody else, uh, about six hours. Yeah. And a lot of clicks can happen in that initial six hour window. Um, and so we take the things we understand to be malicious and use them to train a statistical classifier that makes a judgment to say, um, we believe this. there's an 85% chance that this new thing might be spam. And if the threshold is high enough, we'll just block it automatically. Yeah. So you talked about in your keynote the state of the data union is <laughs> is very strong and and things are good, right? You're 
your peeps, right? The, you mm-hmm. call yourself proclaimed nerd. You're not nerdy, by the way. You're really oh, good I'm in front of the camera. No, great, great. great. Really <laughs> terrific. We'll get but you so, regular. But you basically, you know, your 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 math friends um, mm-hmm. are, are doing well, right? This, the wind is at their back, and just cheap infrastructure, so startups can can do the thing, um, and so it's all good. But but then you mm-hmm. talked about, well, it's it's not all good. We got some challenges here, and one of them is real time. And, and so I wanted you to talk about that a little bit and help us understand, is that a math problem? Is it a physics problem? I mean, how do, how do we solve that? And what do you mean by sort of real time and how do we get there? Um, that's a great question. It is both a math problem, an infrastructure problem, and a problem of the, the applications that we want to address. So it's a product problem. Uh, so in data analysis, historically, our conceit has been that you have all of your data in a nice little package, and you can look at it as many times as you want. You can iterate through it. Uh, you can try different schemes and your algorithms and see which one comes out best, and that could take hours to run or days or sometimes longer. Um, but when you work in a real-time environment, you have to be able to make those same high-quality calculations immediately, that is, uh, with milliseconds. Of latency and that means that we have to make some compromises uh, both mathematically and in the kind of infrastructure that we use what does that what does that do for you guys on the on the security side I mean you mentioned spam um, this is a big challenge I mean real time has been a very big challenge so how does that relate to the user experience Have you give some examples around that latency specifically so we we like to instead of using the word real time we often use the phrase relatively recent time Um, because real-time means different things to different Mm -hmm. applications. If you're a hedge fund trading in microseconds, that's a little bit different than if you're just shortening a link that you want to spread on Twitter. Um, So our goal is to prevent things like spam uh, from getting through the system in about 30 seconds. Um, And we do this by having our infrastructure is set up, so every time a new content item comes in, we put it on a queue, and that queue is processed as quickly as possible. And because we use a lot of cloud machines, we're able to spin up new machines quickly if we get flooded. Do you guys, do you guys have relationships with some of these real-time search companies? Because real-time search a year and a half ago was like the hottest thing. You know, you had, <laughs> you know, um, I even I forget some of the names. Topsy was one. Collectica mm-hmm. was one. Um, one Riot. Did some good work, good thesis, but that just never materialized. Um, and so, because people aren't really searching real time. Mm-hmm. Who wants to stare at a screen and see things going? Where you guys seem to have a better angle on the discovery side, as you get data, you have more knowledge around semantic analysis mm-hmm. between a request, a kind of search query, if you will, to discovery and navigation. Are you guys looking at that area at all? I think we have to change the way we think of the word search. So we have this idea that search means you go to a website, it's got a box on it, you type a query in and you get back a list of results. Um, And and this is an old metaphor for search. Um, So when we think about real-time search, we're trying to think about helping you discover the information you will want to know uh, as soon as possible. And that might not take the form of something where you just type in a query and get back results. Um, if we're if you're a logged in user and we see the kinds of content that you like to click on and like to share uh, We might be able to alert you, uh, but we really we are working on it We have some infrastructure behind it um, and we're able to use it to show things like um, I had a slide in my talk yesterday showing the images coming out of Egypt in real time uh, But we haven't yet figured out what the product manifestation of that will be It's still early. I mean like. search. I mean the search phenomenon is really uh, Google if you will it's such an it's outdated really I mean I'll say that Google's outdated it provides some value if you want to get things here and there but the notion <laughs> uh, is to save people time right yes. people use search because there's a lot of stuff to figure out and they want something and they want to get it fast and or they're discovering and browsing um, whatever so in the social web there are a lot mm-hmm. of different ways to get that it's still a sea of information how are you guys saving time for users what have you have you thought about that piece of it obviously with bitly a shorter link, you get something faster. But in the aggregate, if I want to know about Egypt, there's so much to, to look at. How mm-hmm. do I know what's relevant? So I think the, the real opportunity we have is to take the massive amount of data that's coming through your streams already and to help you filter that. And yeah. I think that's one of the biggest open problems in the tech industry right now is 
not how do we get more data into the stream, but how do we take what's there and help Filter. you find yeah. the most important thing when it's important. And if there isn't anything important, help you not waste your time just reading things. That's on interesting. No, I mean, you're giving essentially like incentives for users to participate and, and allow you to collect data about them and in return, giving them services and capabilities that they can't get anywhere else. And that's sort of a real flip on the way in which we think about access to data and your personal information, isn't it? It is We're here with Hillary Mason from Bitly, uh, data scientist at Bitly here at Inside the Cube with Dave Vellante, <laughs> John Furrier from SiliconAngle.com. My final question is um, a little bit different, not so much about you know the tech, but uh, about you you personally. Um, you're in the data uh, mm -hmm. business. The word data scientists is is kind of being kicked around as kind of a mainstream, which is cool. I love that. Um, but there's a lot of people who are very interested in 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 math and science and are looking at career changes, whether they're you know in their mm -hmm. 40s or you know coming out of MIT, Stanford, or or whatever whatever institution or high school for that matter. What do you see as this profile of a data scientist? I mean, is it pure comp sci? Is it a little bit of cognitive? Is it physicist? Is it <laughs> social science? I mean, it seems to be kind of a, a mashup, mm -hmm. kind of the criteria. I mean, you gotta be super smart, but what do you see that data scientist role and what, what would you share with folks out there who are thinking about, could I do that? If you're thinking about it and you're excited about it and you can understand the math and logic, then yes, you can do it. Um, I, I see data science as a combination of math, uh, computer science, the ability to code things that actually function, um, statistics, and then finally just hacking. And I think that last one is by far the most important. If you're the kind of person who can say, yeah. okay, I have some cool data, I really am curious about some questions about that data, I'm gonna figure this out, then yes, you can do it. So my last question is also of a personal nature. I wanna know what these species are that you discovered. <laughs> what, what, tell us more about that. <laughs> so this uh, was the, the first, sci first scientific adventure I ever had in high school. I was really uh, privileged to participate in a research expedition to Costa Rica. And we discovered high up in the canopy in the rainforest, uh, a kind of nematode and two bacteria that had never been identified before uh, living in these plants shaped like this in the top of the rainforest. So that's what? given your, your statistical background, what are the odds of that? <laughs> Actually, I believe the odds are very high. I think the rainforest is, is full of oh, things okay. we just don't understand. <laughs> um, you guys are living in a startup. I mean, what, what is your, your take on the startup community? Obviously, um, Bitly's out of the East Coast and Silicon Valley has got a different vibe on it. Mm -hmm. It's very robust in, in New York. Um, What's your take on what's happening in the start? I mean, why come just handing out money to people? I mean, <laughs> you know, like, you know, just a little charity going on with the startups, but seriously, there's, there's a lot of money flowing around, a lot mm -hmm. of creativity. What white spaces do you see out there that it might be opportunities for either a young entrepreneur or an entrepreneur to develop around data? So I, I think there are amazing opportunities right now. And as you mentioned, the startup community in New York has become powerful and very strong and very well connected uh, only in the last few years. Um, and a, a lot of those opportunities are in uh, taking the systems that already exist. And we're, we're doing a very good job now of solving the problems we had solved 20 years ago and 10 years ago quickly and efficiently. Um, and as I said yesterday, you can now do it for a hundred bucks at home in your underwear on EC2. <laughs> yeah. um, but you did say that, didn't you? I did. <laughs> yeah, right, um, but we need, we still need to figure out. <laughs> that's New York, <laughs> <laughs> you know? What the new capacities are that we have um, to solve problems that we haven't been able to address. Um, and I think there are huge opportunities around data management, data cleaning, um, helping people draw, make better decisions from their personal data, sort of quantifying things about your life and understanding it in a really easy, frictionless way. And I hope we see a lot more of that, especially in New York in the near future. Okay, we're here with Hillary Mason with Bitly, Chief Data Scientist. Um, data science is a big discussion part of this uh, event here. And uh, entrepreneurs out there, there's a ton of opportunities. Bitly is a great example of a company that was started kind of in the web 2.0, post web 2.0 generation with real time web. And they're doing great and have a lot of data and they're going to harness that data to create new products. Hillary, thanks for sharing with us. Thank you yeah, so much. Thanks, thanks for coming on. This was a lot of fun. It was okay. great to have you. It's a good time to be a, a, a math geek and even better time to be a hacker. So thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. Look thanks forward to having lot. you back.